The Nebra Sky Disk Found on the top of Middleburg Mountain in Germany, amongst a horde of Bronze Age relics, mostly dating to around 1600 BC. However, there is a possibility of this artifact actually being pre-flood. It is the oldest chart of the heavens in the world, but additionally, it displays an astonishing level of skill, creativity, astronomical knowledge, and indeed, accuracy. For a considerable time, reams of quote, specialists attempted to discredit the Nebra sky disk as a fake. However, after numerous in-depth examinations of the artifact, it has reluctantly been academically accepted as authentic. It is a bronze disk, about 32 centimeters in diameter, with a diagram of the heavens embossed onto it in gold. It shows representations of the Sun, Moon, Pleiades, and three other crescents, two presumed to be horizontal lines and the other a possible solar barge. It has been variously proposed that the disk was intended as an astronomical tool, and that through comparison of the skies and a visual display of the extremes of the rising and setting positions of the Sun, it could be used to determine the time of year. In addition, it is proposed that it was used to calculate the difference between the solar and lunar cycles, in the form of adding a 13th lunar month, something which is required every two or three years. Could the Nebra sky disk be an extremely ancient relic, rediscovered by a people around 1600 BC? Partially decoded and used by these people, a group of German scholars who studied this archaeological gem released the following assumptive conclusion. Quote, the sensation lies in the fact that the Bronze Age people managed to harmonize the solar and lunar years. We never thought they would have managed that. The functioning of this clock was probably known to a very small group of people." End quote. Also, according to German astronomer Wolfhard Schlosser of the Ruhr University in Bochum, based on the object, the Bronze Age sky gazers somehow already knew what the Babylonians would describe well over a thousand years later. Whether this was a local discovery or whether the knowledge came from afar is still not clear," Schlosser said. Is the Nebra sky disk an advanced pre-flood relic? With specialists pertaining to such assumptions regarding our history, it is often forgivable to doubt these modern-day attested explanations. Regardless, the sky disk is clearly an amazing object which, thankfully, still exists within the public eye. In the first wing of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, close to the Room of the Mummies, one cannot help but be surprised by what you will discover. In a small, inconspicuous display cabinet, an object like no other can be found. Made from a brittle stone known as schist, it is similar in shape to a wheel or discus. This mysterious and to this day unexplained item has become known among particular circles as the tri-lobed disc. It has perplexed all those who have examined it, especially the select Egyptologists that have had the opportunity to study it at great length. Its discoverer is known as one of the most important Egyptologists of the 20th century, author of a classic volume on Egyptology, Archaic Egypt, that continues to be an important bibliographic reference of study even to this day. While carrying out excavations in 1936 within the archaeological zone of Saqqara, Emery discovered the tomb of Prince Sabu. Among several utensils of varying function, the trilobe disc would be found. Emery's attention was immediately drawn to the object, initially defining it in his reports on the First Dynasty tombs as, quote, a container in the form of schist bowl. Years later, he again commented on the subject with a word that perfectly summarized the reality of the situation, indicating to the discomfort the object was causing, describing it as a kachibachi, a small hole that threatens to become bigger and bigger. It seems Emery, like many others within the same field, retain their success and notoriety by deliberately and publicly denying such artifacts any traction within the public domain. Denying us all a true understanding of Egyptian history, or at least a questioning of the currently upheld teachings. He finished his quotation by stating that, a satisfactory explanation has not yet been obtained on the particular design of this object 
or indeed its construction. The accepted and predictably rigid view regarding the introduction of the wheel into ancient Egypt coincided with the invasion of the Hyksos at the end of the Medium Empire in 1640 BC. This date being over a thousand years after the disk's construction. Egyptologist Cyril Alred reached the conclusion that the object was, without a doubt, a copy of a previously much older metallic object. A detail next to the orifice in the center also made him suspect that this object was only a small part of a more complex mechanism and that it was saved thanks to a stone reproduction for unknown reasons made by an artist with unknown tools, and the fact that it demonstrates such a complex design at such a primitive time in ancient Egyptian history suggests its origins may have been far more unusual than modern tenants would have you believe. It is highly possible that this artifact is a fragment of one's highly advanced technologies which have subsequently been lost over the millennia. Regardless of hypothesis, its true function, history, or indeed construction, its reason for existence remains a mystery to this day. We have covered many strange artifacts upon our channel, many of them after in-depth examinations by the numerous leading skeptics of their time, challenging the rigidly protected views of antiquity hinting at an extraordinarily longer history than currently taught. It must be noted that to classify as an upart, an object doesn't have to be of an unexplained nature. They can also be highly advanced pieces of technology, dated far within our past, yet for some reason not seen again until very recently. Usually, these objects display advanced technological methods of creation that were not again realized until very recently. Our next artifact is an ancient clay disc. Discovered in 1908 within the palace of Phaistos Crete, a 4,000-year-old CD-ROM that we feel may soon be added to the list of Uparts. The Dropa discs, artifacts eerily similar to the tablet, are purported by some to have been left by a group of extraterrestrials known as the Dropa people, who apparently crashed within the Bayan Air Mountains some 12,000 years ago. This account translated from the discs in 1962. These 716 unexplained discs share the same advanced technique of recording information as our disc found in Crete a method that many specialists, such as Gareth Owens of the Technological Educational Institute of Crete, are now calling an ancient CD-ROM. However, what we feel makes the stone tablet an official upart, just like the stones of Dropa, is the fact that the language used upon the disc is as yet undeciphered. And although the Dropa discs were apparently decoded in 1962, an agreement upon the accuracy of this translation has never been agreed upon. What could these mysterious symbols mean? Why are they placed, or rather stored, upon this particular circular stone tablet in such a peculiar, yet to us, technologically familiar format? Describing the artifact as an apparent Phaistos disc and the first Minoan CD-ROM, Gareth and other specialists have seemingly been struggling to explain the clearly unusual characteristics of the tablet, and indeed its possible origins. Predictably, instead of mentioning any possibility that due to the disc's unknown language and clear antiquity that it could, perhaps, be a long-lost relic from a civilization as yet not understood, it has merely been placed within the very recent past with an explanation of it being nothing more than a prayer disc to a mother. Experts admit that the tablet is very hard to explain, and they are struggling to come up with a definitive reading of the disc, made up of 241 unknown tokens engraved upon both sides, these now known to have been based off a 45-symbol alphabet. Who built this ancient disc in the design of a modern CD-ROM? Why can't we read the unusual language written upon it? Is it, as the academics claim, a mere 4,000 years old? Or is it, as we feel the evidence suggests, 
actually an extremely ancient Upart. Sarmiza Jatusa Regia, ancient Greece, once the capital and most important military, religious, and political center of the Dacians, a civilization that flourished before their eventual decline to the Roman Empire. Erected upon the top of a mountain, the fortress, comprising of six citadels, like countless other areas claimed as ancient Rome, possesses evidence of a far deeper history. This additional evidence would suggest Sarmizegetusa Regia is indicative of an ancient antediluvian site, one once strategically placed and subsequently rebuilt upon. The site displays severe erosion, with many larger megalithic stones now moss-covered and returning to an unidentifiable geological state. The solar stone, however, a relic also of tremendous age, has experienced a conservation effort later in its life. The linking wall of the disk's blocks precisely marks the north-south latitudes, with an appendix used upon the surface as an ancient sundial, with the shadow of the tip of the gnomon depicting the time of day and year, its shadow touching the disk's prolongation when the sun culminates in the south. Additionally, like Stonehenge or the countless Neolithically claimed earthworks and henges across the world, were seemingly obsessed with the solar precession. The ingenious builders also, somehow, incorporated into the dimensions of the disk and position of the gnomon knowledge about the change of the sun's position during the seasons. Thus, during the moon of the winter solstice, the year's longest shadow would have been positioned to the eastern edge of the stone. While during the summer solstice, the shadow would only reach the edge of the disk, making the solar stone an incredibly accurate and ingenious eternal celestial calendar. Who built Sarmizegetusa Regia? Where did such detailed astronomical knowledge come from, so far back in human history? Were they a surviving remnant of a once far more capable yet post-apocalyptic civilization? We find such possibilities highly compelling. In 1938, an expedition was conducted, led by Dr. Kai Pute, an archaeologist with the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing, into the Bay and Carola Mountains of China, looking for evidence of ancient civilizations. He was trying to find shelter in the Kunlung Ket mountain chain, when a team member entered a cave and found strange inscriptions on the walls. At the back of the cave they found several tombs, aligned in a row, containing strange-looking skeletons, each measuring 1 meter 20 centimeters in length and having an abnormally large skull. Buried with the skeletons, over 700 stone discs were discovered. Not knowing what they were, the team collected the stone discs up and took them back for study. The discs are around 1 foot in diameter, with two spiral grooves moving out from a center hole. They ended up in storage for over 20 years, before Tsu Munwi found out about the discs and was given the permission to study them further. This is when something amazing is discovered to be contained on the stone discs, an amazing story which would cost Tsu his reputation and ultimately his life. The Chinese Academy of Sciences tried to ban the publication of these findings, but eventually the story of the Dropper tribe and their stone discs was released. What he discovered were tiny hieroglyphs etched into the grooves upon the discs. The hieroglyphs tell an amazing story. By 1962, Tsum had successfully deciphered the writings, stating that they told the story of a spaceship crashing on the mountains some 12,000 years ago. The ship contained the dropper people, who were unable to fix the craft. Stranded on Earth with no hope of returning home, this story tells of their short lives here. They explain how most are killed by the local human population. In the end, the last remaining members die in the cave. Russian researchers requested the discs for study, and allegedly several were shipped to Moscow. Once there, it is said that they were scraped for loose particles and put through a chemical analysis which revealed that they contained large amounts of cobalt and other metallic substances. As recorded in the Soviet magazine Sputnik, Dr. Vyacheslav Seyazev describes an experiment where the discs were supposedly placed on a special turntable, whereby they were shown to vibrate or hum in an unusual rhythm, as though an electric charge is passing through them. However, fast forward to present day and no evidence survives of the discs, nor Tsum himself, nor the ridicule he received which cost him his life. 
It appears as though the discs have been skillfully transformed into an apparent hoax. Bayan Kerala remains one of China's most remote regions, its mountains reach as high as 5,000 meters, a new expedition is being prepared to this remote place, largely funded by Chinese media companies, I will keep you posted on what they discover.